Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to Four Ways to Capture Your Client's Attention. How to Harness the Power of Focus for Rapid Therapeutic Results. Now, is there anything worse than having your therapeutic pearls flounder on the rocks of distraction? When we therapists and counsellors or coaches or psychologists or people help us in any variety seek to help our clients, we need to enable them to truly focus on our interventions. And for that, we need resolute, focused attention from our clients. But how can we capture client attention in therapy when that precious opportunity presents itself? One of the many reasons I use hypnosis in therapy is because I've found that it's the best way to help clients focus so they can really listen and take on board new, more productive ideas and emotional responses. And once focus becomes narrowed, it gains great power, like the magnifying glass gathering the heat of the sun to ignite a flame. The more concentrated and narrowed it is, the more powerful it becomes. So here are four ways to help you focus the attention of your clients for quicker therapeutic results. Number one, be ambiguous about what's going to happen. When we're expecting something but aren't sure what it is, we narrow our focus in order to check our expectation. Implying by what you say that something will occur but you don't know what it is yet creates curiosity in your client and curiosity always narrows and fixates attention. For example, you might say to a client something like, and I'm very curious and you can be very curious too to discover in just a few moments just how your unconscious mind is going to produce a profound hypnotic trance state. And neither of us know yet just how that's going to happen. Maybe you'll just start to feel a little sleepy or perhaps you'll begin to feel a kind of far away feeling in your mind. Or those hands of yours may feel a little warmer first and you'll have no idea yet just what the first signs will be that you're beginning to go into a beautiful, relaxing, therapeutic trance. But you can enjoy waiting for a few moments to find out what those first signs are within yourself that you're really beginning to relax. Another way to use this ambiguity is to presuppose that your client will begin to notice the changes that they want to see in themselves, but that how and when that can happen may surprise them. So you might say something like, you know, I wonder who will be the first person to notice that you're feeling a growing confidence in your work. You know, I wonder who's going to notice first. It might surprise you who's going to notice first, and that can uh, be a really curious thing. What will you be doing when you first notice you're free of that drinking habit? Okay, what will you be doing differently? It might surprise you. So you're building up curiosity, and curiosity focuses attention. Number two, use what is already fascinating to the person. If our clients are clearly fascinated by something, then we can utilize that interest, which already has their attention, and narrow their focus even more on it. So for example, Ross, a client of mine, kept talking about how he just couldn't believe he'd been able as a child to play the piano in front of a large audience, uh, something he felt he could never do the equivalent of now as an adult. And because he had expressed amazement and therefore was easily focused by the subject, I began to talk about it as a way to capture his attention even further. And I said to him, there's still a part of you that remembers, that knows the exact feeling of being so focused on playing the piano, that the crowd just kind of disappeared in the moment. A particular room, a particular piece of music, being in total flow, there's still a part of you that knows the exact experience of that. And you can connect up to that part of you again on one level right now. Your hands still remember the precise sensations of moving over the keys as your eyes remember the music that you were reading. And your ears, what they heard, even if you don't know that yet. 
And because I was talking about what already fascinated him, I was talking about it in an unfamiliar way, Ross was able to enter a profound and spontaneous hypnotic trance state without me even asking him to go into hypnosis. Number three, home in on their symptoms. People know very well how to focus on their problems. That's often a big part of the problem. So with someone who'd been having panic attacks, you might talk about how people experience faster breathing, feeling hot in the face, feeling like they want to run away and so forth as a prelude to focusing your client more positively. So, or I might say to a blusher, for example, and blushing is a kind of post-hypnotic response and wonderful evidence of the mind-body connection. And perhaps you can just close your eyes and notice what that feels like by imagining you're beginning to blush right now. And as you do that, you can also notice what it's like not to blush in that situation and to feel really chilled and cool and calm. Now, if I'm working with a smoker, I'll invariably start off fixing their attention uh, by giving them the experience of having a cigarette in their mind step by step. This is their area of expertise, so it's easy for them to focus on it. So we're focusing on what we want to move away from eventually, but because their mind is good at focusing on the problem, then we can use it as, as a gateway into focusing on solutions as a beginning step. Doing this as a way of getting people used to focusing on ideas presented by you through making sure that what you're presenting is already familiar. And if your client can't focus on the reality of having a cigarette or blushing, then you can even use that inability to feel the problem as a way to help them overcome it permanently. So it's a win-win situation. This technique of focusing your client's mind on what has troubled them should not be confused with bringing on a panic attack or some other symptom. We need to do this in a very controlled way. So rather it's a controlled way of discussing their symptoms, touching upon them so that you can catch and hold their focus of attention, but not taking them back into the absolute pain of something. Okay, and certainly when we're dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, we keep our clients out of the kinesthetic, the emotional effect of the traumatic times. But once the catalyst has done its work, you can quickly move on to positively focused interventions. Number four, vary your tone and delivery. I use a soft voice because that compels attention. So spoke Dr. Milton Erickson. And some people still have an idea about hypnosis that we all speak in a dramatic whisper or worse still, a dull, monotone. But effective hypnosis can use all the tones in the scale because hypnosis isn't about boring the client into a stupor, okay? That's what social situations are for, not really, okay? But its aim is to capture and hone the client's focus. Sometimes this means using a soft voice to encourage relaxed inner focus, but sometimes the conspiratorial phrasing of a gossip works just as well as soft and relaxing words. So you can engage your client's attention by shifting your tone and inflection in the same way that an actor focuses an audience's attention through emotion and emphasis. You don't want to do that in an in, in overly dramatic way because that can seem a bit weird, but you need to be, or well, we need to have a sense that we use our voice uh, in variant ways by working flexibly with your clients, picking up on their individualities and passions, you can better understand what makes them unique and find the best way to help them more quickly. Once you've helped them narrow their attention, you'll find it becomes easier to effectively direct their focus in helpful ways so they can begin to respond to and deal with whatever's troubling them. So, I hope you found that useful and if you did please hit the like and subscribe button and if you want to hear when my next video is published hit the notification bell below this video. I'm Mark Terrell of Uncommon Knowledge and if you'd like my free ebook on reframing subscribe to my email newsletter at unk.com slash blog that's unk.com slash blog and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.